So, you know, we, we started into this 5-1 and we're, we're doing integration or anti-differentiation. And, and I did a lot of good examples <clears throat> Monday. Um, and you might have got started on some homework. But one of the early homework problems I didn't do an example of. Uh, this might help you a lot, actually. I, you know, one way, well, let's see. Here's one way I, would, I talked. I, I sort of talked like this. If I gave you a, a derivative, if I gave you a derivative, could you find the function? And yes, uh, you, we, we just learned this Monday. Yes, you can do an anti-derivative. You can integrate. And, uh, and so how do you find the function? You integrate and you, I could, I'm not even using the notation, I guess. I'm just going to integrate, uh, which would be the backwards of differentiating. So I would x squared, I would add one, x squared, divide by two, and I'm done. You guys with me? x squared plus c. So given a derivative, can you find a function? Yeah, you integrate. I didn't use the notation, I just did it in my head there. <clears throat> you know, here's, I'm gonna say the same thing with some different notation though, watch this. <clears throat> given a derivative, given a derivative, can you find a function? Now look, so I'm using a little different notation, but this is dy dx, we always knew as the derivative of y with respect to x, that's what dy dx always was and is. Um, but the, you know, there, there was an, there's a few things I skipped over the last first few chapters, but one little thing I skipped at the end of chapter four was this thing about differentials that you can kind of think of the dy and the dx as separate, as separate little quantities. And so watch this. If you sort of, this is kind of funny, but if you treat this algebraically and like multiply both sides by dx, okay. You can sort of, I know, all your life, the last few months, you've thought of dy dx as kind of one thing, the derivative. But now I'm sort of thinking of it as a dy over a dx, and I can multiply both sides by dx. What happens? The dx cancels. I get dy equals 2x dx. And, and we refer, I guess I should have referred to this, I could point to this and call it a derivative. Um, and, you know, I can point to this and call it a derivative. <clears throat> um, uh, but I think now I'm going to point to this and call it a, a differential. And I'm not too concerned about the language, but it's, it's subtle. But now I'm calling it a differential. And it's, it's dy equals 2x dx. Anyway, it's a different way of writing the derivative. You can sort of say that. But what was the question? <clears throat> the question was that originally, maybe before I multiplied by dx, what I had was what I had was a differential equation. Uh, your book called this a differential equation. Um, I didn't. I don't think did I bring that up Monday at all? Did I use that word at all? No. I don't think I did. So a differential equation is an equation with a derivative in it. And listen, there's whole courses. There's a course called differential equations. There's advanced differential equations. There's partial different. There's all kinds of differential equations is a huge subject. Uh, but it involves this. If you know about the derivative, can you get to the function? Can you, to solve a differential equation, you're trying to find the function. So in a way, I just did a differential equation right here. You know, here's a derivative. Technically, it's a differential equation. It's an equation with a derivative in it. Here's a derivative. Can you find the function? So you integrate. I mean, you don't mean to make it sound scary by saying you're solving a differential equation. Does that sound scary? Maybe it does, but you're just integrating. Anyway, that's what I want to do here. I want to solve this differential equation. It's the same thing, but, but check the notation. Here's what I'm trying to teach you this notation. I multiplied by dx. And now I integrate both sides. Watch. I integrate this side, and I integrate this side. It's like, it's like you know, in algebra, you add two to both sides. You know, you multiply by three on both sides. You, you integrate both sides. And, and now look what I'm doing over here. I'm integrating the number one with respect to y. So the variable is y. I'm integrating this number one with respect to y. 
I'm trying to find the antiderivative of one. The variable is y. Do you know the answer? Y. Y. Good job. <clears throat> Integrating with respect to y, we get y. On the other side, I'm integrating with respect to x, right? That's what that says. See the dx? I'm integrating with respect to x. The variable is x. And how do you integrate it to x? I mean, we already did it in our head a second ago. But we do our power rule. <clears throat> x squared divided by 2. The 2 cancels. The answer is x squared plus c. And we're done. And we solved a differential equation. And we used integration. We used integration to solve a differential equation. Solving the differential equation means find the function y. When we say solve the differential equation, we mean find the function y that, that whose derivative is up is there. <clears throat> so we did that. You guys all right? You might have this one funny little question. Do you have a funny little, does anybody have a funny little question? <clears throat> yeah? What was the DX? Well, I know, see, <clears throat> so here's what I taught you yesterday. I taught you that the notation for an antiderivative is we're integrating a function, we get this symbol, which means integrate, or please do the antiderivative, of this function, and then you have this symbol. This is part of the notation, and this says you're doing it with respect to the variable x. So then when you do it, <clears throat> the answer is the anti, you know, this is called the integrand, and you're really just finding the antiderivative of this integrand. Sounds like I'm on Star Trek or something. <laughs> but you're finding the antiderivative of this integrand, and we denoted it in general, we denoted it capital F of x. Uh, and then plus C. So if your question is, you know, what happened to the dx? Well, it, nothing. Ha it was part of this notation, and 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 when you do the antiderivative of a function, we just we integrate the function, we get the answer. There is no more dx. There is no more integral symbol. I mean, <clears throat> this is saying please integrate. Once you integrate, don't write that damn symbol again, please. <laughs> please, <clears throat> you know. I, I'm teaching you proper notation. Students have an issue with proper notation sometimes. They don't write things correctly, and it's kind of, you know, maybe you, you do, maybe you do integrate, but, <clears throat> you know, but you, you can, like, you, you write this symbol. I mean, that would be bad. You can't write this symbol again. Once you've integrated, I'm not, this, because this says, please integrate him. And, you know, and I'm, I'm supposed to be done, you know, so the integral symbol <clears throat> was kind of here. <clears throat> Anyway, <clears throat> so that's what you do. You're integrating this function, and there's the answer, plus C. I've heard some students say this. I don't really like this. Some students say, oh, the, the DX turns into the plus C. I mean, that ain't right. I mean, that ain't right. But if it's a way for your brain to think about the notation, maybe it sort of helps, but I don't like it, really. It's not right. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking this question. I thought maybe you would ask this question. You know, on this side, I integrated with respect to y, and my answer was y. How come I didn't put a plus c over here? That's the question I was waiting for you to ask. Were you thinking of asking that question? You didn't think of it. Maybe you didn't think of it. But maybe I should have put a plus c over here. You know, but I, I never do, and I never will. And, but the reason is this. Here's the explanation. Peace. You were about to ask that question. Um, the explanation is, uh, if you did put a C over here, let's call it C1, and then you integrate this, you put a C2. The truth is, you know what, you, you try to solve for Y. You want Y by itself. So then you would subtract C1. Well, if you subtract C1, then you got an arbitrary C and another arbitrary C. And when you subtract them, guess what we call it? It's an arbitrary C. You know what I mean? I mean, they're not the same C, so they don't subtract to zero. You understand that? Whatever they are, they're arbitrary. So I can't pretend they're the same, so I can't subtract it to zero. But I can subtract them and call it a new arbitrary C. Are you following me? 
So I don't do all that. I do all that in my head. And, and, and my answer is <clears throat> just, just put a plus C on this side. <clears throat> Here, let's try another one. This is a differential equation. <clears throat> Can you solve this differential equation? And you may do it, and you may do it correctly, and you may do it with very bad notation. Here, I am doing it with correct notation. Technically, I would sort of multiply both sides by dx, and, it, and then it would look like this. You know what I mean? I'd multiply, then it would look like this. And then, what did I say next? I would integrate both sides. So I'm integrate, I've, when I put this integral symbol on both sides, now I've set myself up with two little integrals and they both have the proper notation. I mean, this is the proper notation for an integral with respect to x. This is the proper notation for an integral with respect to y. This side, you're only, what are you integrating? You're integrating a one and so the answer is y. And you've got, and then all your real job is to integrate what's over on this side. I mean, that's the real job. I'm explaining this notation, but the problem is really you integrate what's on that side, and that is uh, easy. It's easy. Uh, one third x cubed plus eight x. That's how you integrate an eight plus c. I mean, this all this integration is brand new to us, so. If you don't know how to integrate an eight, I'll help you. It is easy, but it's, I'm integrating, right? <clears throat> I'm doing the reverse of differentiation. I'm doing my, my, I'm doing my integration power rule, which is add one and divide by the new power. And when it's an eight, you know, you could think, you know what you could think? You could think that's eight X to the zero. You could think like that. It's kind of weird but you could think like that. That's what an eight is. Anyway, if you do the power rule, you add one to it, it's eight X to the one and you divide by one, what's the answer? Eight X. That's probably not the best way to think, <clears throat> but it, it works. I, I, I would kind of just think, you know, hang on. What's the derivative of eight X? The derivative of eight X is eight. So what's the antiderivative of eight? Eight X. I mean, I kind of think like that backwards. <clears throat> but. Yes, Carlos? When you integrate the x squared over there, instead of one third x cubed, would another answer have been x cubed over three? Yeah, that's not another answer. It's the exact same thing. Yep. So either, uh, either answer would totally work. Well, it's just not another answer. It's the exact same thing. He's asking me if, if one third x cubed is the same as x cubed over three, and we should all know that that is the exact same thing. So either form is correct. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't even, yeah. Yep. Because I still see right away, you know, one third. I know. So please, please, please understand that as soon as you can, uh, everybody, because I will often write that, or I'll write that, or I'll write that. I mean, I'll just, they're the same. So you never know what I'm gonna write. You can do whatever you want to write, but they, they are the same. They are the same, and you should understand that. Right. <clears throat> yes? Right now, it's on this 5.1 or 4.8? Right, this is 5.1. Yeah, because you mentioned something about 4.8 earlier. I did, um, although that's not really where I wanted to go today. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm not. I'm not going to four point eight. And then I write four point eight on the board. <laughs> You guys. <clears throat> now listen, I'm not doing 4.8. I may, I may, listen, 4.8 was a section I skipped. And I may get to that eventually. But that's not the one I wanted to do today. Uh, except I wanted to explain this differential notation, right? I wanted to explain this, right? <clears throat> and Because I think it helps with the idea of 
integrating. You, you know, here's a derivative and you're integrating. I don't know. I, th I, like, I think this helps. I don't think it makes it confusing. I don't know. It's another way of talking. It's another... All we're doing is integrating. Please integrate this is all this question is. Mm -hmm. But I wanted you to see the notation involved. <clears throat> and anyway, I feel like I can explain that notation without going into 4.8. But let me just say something about 4.8. In 4.8, they say, hey, you guys, remember the derivative? We could write the derivative like this, or we could write the derivative like this. That's what they say. And then they say, this is called a derivative. And then they say, but those little dy's and those little dx's by themselves are called differentials. And so how do you treat the dy and the dx sort of separately? And so then they kind of multiply both sides by dx and they get this relationship. dy is f prime of x dx. And this, it's kind of a funny little notation here but it's called differential notation. And then they do, then they do a lot more in 4.8. They teach you how to do some complicated error problems. They do a lot of kind of complicated problems I don't want to do. So I'm not teaching you 4.8, but I am doing this brief, quick little notation just to help you with this in, in 5.1. <clears throat> There's not even much of this in 5.1. <clears throat> Check this out. Uh, um, so, so what is in 5.1 is, is a lot of integrals. Uh, there is a couple of these right at the beginning. Um, uh, <clears throat> three, four, five, and six uh, kind of look like this differential equation thing, and they even, they even use the word solve the differential equation. Um, after that, they're just asking you to integrate. Um, <clears throat> Here's one, number 10. They want you to integrate this. So now you're just integrating. You don't have to think of it as a differential equation, but, but this is a function and I'm looking for his antiderivative. I mean, that, that is what's going on. This is a function you could, and I'm looking for his antiderivative. Um, but then it gets kind of, you know, algebraic and, and I mean, we need a little, I mean, how do you do this? I would suggest, <clears throat> You square that thing is what I would suggest, and it's a 9x squared. And then in order to use the power rule, I would move that x up, you know, to make it look like a power. I think, you know, I went over an example like this. But I would treat the 1 ninth like a constant. So I'm going to pretend it's a 1 ninth. I'm, I'm factoring out a 1 ninth. I'm pulling out the constant 1 ninth. I'm moving the x up. It's x to the negative 2. I mean... So far, I haven't, I've done algebra, do you understand? And I have not integrated. Notice, I still have the integration symbol and the dx sitting there. I still have the proper notation sitting there. As soon as I do the integration move, then I lose the symbol and I lose the symbol. I think I'm ready for that integration move. Uh, how do you integrate an x to the negative two? Uh, you add one to it, x to the negative one, Divide by negative one. negative one. There is a multiplied one ninth out front. Anything else? Plus C. And you're and you're and you're and you're done. Actually, I didn't. And and when and since you're done, please don't write another integration symbol. You did the integration. Don't write it again. And you don't need the dx. That was part of the integration symbol. So we're done. Are you with me? Well, we're done, except maybe we should clean these things up a little. I, I sort of told you Monday I don't really care about cleaning them up, but we should clean that guy up. <clears throat> uh, yes, Carlos? So, would you mark any points down if on these types of problems, after getting rid of the integral symbol, we don't write plus C every single step, instead of right at the very end where the answer's at? Uh, so I, I, what I like to do is teach you how to do mathematics kind of correctly and do calculus correctly. And, and then when you start asking me about how many points I'm going to take off or something like that, I don't know that until I grade, I don't, I don't really know until I grade a test. And then it, that kind of depends on my mood. If I'm in a bad mood, I might be take more points off than when I'm in a good mood. Did you guys know that? <laughs> 
Do we put you to bed? <laughs> oh no, no, it might be other worldly things. You know, <laughs> not, it's not not your fault. So we put you in there. <clears throat> no, I'm kidding about all that, but I don't want to get a discussion about how many points I take off or what I take off. Listen, so when you integrate, uh, you get the antiderivative and you add C. That's what you're supposed to do. You get this family of functions. You get this, uh, right, this, this, this set of functions, really, with this plus arbitrary C. Um, I I'd like to clean this up a little, and that means, really all that means is drop the X back into the denominator. The 9 is in the denominator. The negative sign is in the denominator, but I like to write my negative signs in the numerator. So if you don't mind, I'm going to write negative 1 over 9X plus C. I mean, that's what this is. That's what this is. Negative 1 over 9X plus C. <clears throat> So that's my answer. Um, um, this is kind of a classic. They make me do this. Look at this number, uh, number 20. This is an integral. I'm just doing some homework for you, I guess. I could have asked you what you wanted, but I'm just doing what I want. Um, this is x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 5, x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 5, all over x to the fourth with respect to x. I mean, this is an integral. Please do this integral. <clears throat> That's all it is, you know. Just do these integrals. Um, <clears throat> this one doesn't look like it fits. It doesn't fit the way it sits. It doesn't fit any of the rules I learned. In fact, you know, what kind of rules did I learn? I learned how to do an e function and a I learned a 1 over x, I learned an e function, I learned six trig functions. I didn't really learn them, I just, I knew all my derivative rules and so I just learned all my derivative rules backwards. I did that. I did that for six, for six trig functions, for e to the x, and for 1 over x, whose antiderivative is log x, natural log x. So I, I learned those rules, and then the only other rule I got is a power rule. So I don't have a rule for what sits up here. I don't have a rule for what sits up here. Uh, I, I don't have a quotient rule. I don't have product rule. I told you that. So, so you have to manipulate things algebraically, a lot like I did with this guy. I manipulated this algebraically before I integrated. Well, that's what I should do with this. Do you have a clue of what sort of algebraic manipulation would be useful? Divide everybody, yeah. Everybody is over x to the fourth. Let's separate it and make it three separate terms over x to the fourth. So that means it would be x to the fourth over x to the fourth. What would that be, x to the fourth over x to the fourth? That'd be a one. And then I'd have a three x squared over x to the fourth. I think that would be a negative three over x squared. Do you agree? And then I'd have a positive 5 over x to the 4th, which I think would be a positive 5 over x to the 4th. So that's simply dividing the, numer the denominator, which is a single term denominator, just dividing him into each numerator term. That's easy. But you might not think of it, you know, algebraically. You might stare at this forever and never think of that, I suppose. But in, we've done that before in calculus. We did that when we were doing derivatives, and, and now here it is in antiderivatives. Oh, by the way, I'm not really quite ready to do my power rules until I sort of move these up. Right, I gotta move these babies up. Okay, so let me rewrite it again. If I rewrite it as x to the negative two, five x to the, okay. Now I'm actually ready to integrate. I can sit there and integrate each term. I'm allowed to integrate each term. I'm allowed to take multiplied constants and just sit them out front of each integral. So I'm really got sort of three little integrals here. Here I go, the integral of a one, please. Good job. The integral of this guy, please. Uh, let's see, add one to it. Uh, this, gets all, this always gets me confused. I need to sl let me sl I slow down and figure it out. Uh, add one to it, it's x to the negative one. And then I'm dividing by a negative one. And there's a three sitting there. You guys cool? Okay. Next, add one to that. x to the negative three. Divide by negative three, and there's a five multiplied there. Anything else I should do? Cosine. Hey, good job. 
plus, plus C for hey, plus C for Carlos. <laughs> plus C for Carlos. You you should be able to remember that. Good. Oh, so so yeah, you're right. I should never forget C. That's right. <laughs> None of us will probably. Good. Um, that's awesome. C can stand for me. <laughs> all right, cool. So I'm done. You guys all right? No, no big deal, but I had to, it was not in a good form. I had to do a little algebra to get it in the right form. Hey, I am done. I'm finished. Uh, <clears throat> again, I, no, I guess we're not in the habit of leaving negative exponents. You probably don't like it. I probably don't like, I mean, maybe we do clean these up a little sometimes. Uh, so hang on, what is that? That's an X. What am I gonna do? That it's a positive three, but I'm dropping that X into the denominator. Is that what I'm doing? It's a positive three, the X goes into the denominator, right. Uh, this is a negative five thirds, uh, but the X goes, the X cubed goes into the denominator. Okay, so same, same, same thing, written a little differently. <clears throat> um, okay, <clears throat> let's do one of these. Uh, I want to do this. Number 40. You ready? Check this out. I don't know how good this is, but it's number 40. I did one like this yesterday, but I'm doing another one for you. Uh, and number 40, what they give me is F double prime, and they say it's the sine of X. <clears throat> so they call it, it's F double prime, and that's their notation. And then they give me a couple other pieces of information. They say... Uh, F prime of uh, F prime of zero is one, and F of zero is six. I mean, F prime of zero is one, and F of zero is six. And their question is, uh, find the function f. Find f of x. So you got the idea, I think. <clears throat> you're given a second derivative, a second derivative, and you're asked to find the function. You should probably. Integrate. Twice. I mean, is that obvious or what, right? You're given the second derivative. You're trying to find the function. You should probably integrate twice. Now, let me show you what happens. So, so, so when I integrate this first time, now check this out, because to get your mind straight, you're, you're about to integrate this. When you integrate this, what will this answer be? Oh, this will be f prime, right? Right? I mean, that's f double prime, so when you integrate f double prime, you'll get f prime. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, let's see, if I integrate f prime, I mean, if I integrate sine x, if I integrate, what is that? Uh, uh, right, so. All right, here's what I do, I get confused, so I could do this. <coughs> the derivative of sine is cosine. So if I integrate cosine, I get sine. That didn't help me. That's not what I'm doing. All right, hold on. The other one. The other one was the derivative of cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So if you want to integrate a sine, you get negative cosine. Whew. Okay, good. I got it figured out. So the answer is negative cosine x plus c. And that's the answer, and it generates its own plus c. Now, hang on. You want to integrate again, you said. You want to integrate again. But before you do, let's, let's stop. I wonder if we can find this C. Is there any information that helps me find this C? Yeah, right here, there's a piece of information about F prime. It says, if you plug a zero into F prime, you get one. That's what that says. And if you use that piece of information right now, you'll be able to find C. Let's do it. Yes, Carlos? We started off with f double prime equals sine x, but then f prime is the integral integral sine dx. But I don't see that because the second derivative of sine is not sine. Uh, because what did you just say? That what was the last thing you said? You don't the see a derivative of sine. It, it, it's not itself. No, it's not. Um, 
That's why I think that looks a little off. Yeah. Was there something I did here? Probably, or, or something you're not seeing, or something. Something ain't, something's, because this does make sense. Let me help you try to make sense out of it. Um, this is the second derivative right here. So I put the second derivative in here. This is the second derivative, see it? But you wrote down first derivative. No, hang on, this is the second derivative. I'll exp you gotta let me finish explaining, usually, because I, I explain things. So this is the second derivative, it's in here. Now when you integrate a second derivative, what will you get when you integrate a second derivative? What will you get? When you integrate a second derivative, where will you end up? First. Yes. So when you integrate the second derivative, what will it equal? The first derivative. Oh. Yeah. Good. And so then I did integrate it, and here it is, and it equals this, this is the first derivative right here. I'm gonna plug in this initial condition, like I said. I'm gonna plug in this piece of information and find C. What I said was X was zero and F prime was a one. So this is a one if you plug in a zero. Um, the cosine of zero is one, but it's a negative sign there. So this is a negative one plus C. When you add this one to this side, guess what C is? Two. So what, now you have the first derivative. The first derivative is, uh, here it is, it's this negative cosine x plus two. You guys okay? You just integrated him, plus c, use the information to find the plus c. That's all, it's easy. But guess what we gotta do? Same game, same exact game, one more time, to get to the function. To get to the function, <clears throat> to get to the function, I think I should integrate this. Do you agree? You agree? I should integrate this to get to the function. Okay. Here we go. Uh, how do you integrate a negative cosine? Let's see. How, about, how do you integrate a cosine? When you integrate a cosine, you just get a sine. When you integrate a cosine, you get a sine. So if there's a negative out front, there's a negative out front. Negative sine x. Hey, how do you integrate a 2? Two? 2x. Two All right, and then I get another plus c. And, you know, maybe, I don't know, it's a different c than this one. You know, maybe I should have used c1 and c2 or some kind of subscripts, but it's, it's a different c. <clears throat> cool. This is awesome. Uh, I can find that c because there is a piece of information up here about the function f. Uh, where is it? Oh, here it is. Here's a piece of information about f. It says when you plug in a zero, you get six. And that'll help me find c. Here I go. I will get a six if I plug in a zero. Well, if I plug in a zero, this is kind of funny. Uh, not funny, really, but the sine of zero is zero. This is a zero. It turns out c is six. And we're done. Finished. We found the function. Uh, where is it? Oh, here it is. It's this function with that C filled in. Negative sine x plus 2x plus 6. That was awesome. If, what, hey, what if you went and took his second derivative? You should get this. You should get this. If you did his second derivative, you should get this. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, anyway, in a way, I, I went through some a lot of these types of problems the other day. I mean, everything's there's always a new twist to these problems. Um, <clears throat> but I wanna, I really wanna do something kind of different here. Yes, Carlos. So, did this question have two answers or one? This question number forty uh, is looking for the function, and we're finished here. This is the answer. Oh, so just because there's a double derivative doesn't mean it's going to have the first answer be what the first derivative is and the second one be what the function is. It's just the function. It's just the, the ultimate question. You're right. The ultimate question was to from go from the second derivative to the function. And it was definitely a two-step process. And it was the same process twice. It was the same process. 
When you integrate this guy, you get the first derivative, you find his C, and you know, you get, there you are. But that's just halfway to the answer. Now you need another derivative and another C, and you find that C, and then you get the, 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 the function. Right, two steps, two big steps. Go from the second derivative to the first derivative, then you go from the first derivative to the function, using integration twice, right? This process twice, right? <clears throat> hey, um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> so if, if you have a, a, a function, sometimes we would refer to it as s of t, and we would call it uh, position, or if I was throwing objects up in the air, I would call it position or height. Are you okay with that? And if I took the derivative, what would I call that? This is an object being thrown up in the air. If I took the derivative, we called it velocity. velocity. Now, if you don't mind, I can call it S prime or I can call it V. I mean, is that okay? V is the derivative of S. V is the derivative of S. It's, and I'm gonna put the word velocity here. And, and we went over this. And then if I did the second derivative of S, or I could call it the first derivative of velocity, or I could call it A for acceleration, right, you guys? And this is a big physics. I mean, this is, this is how the world works, man. I mean, things move, <laughs> and their relationships between velocity, acceleration, and position are these derivative relationships. Uh, I mean, this is basic science in a way, <clears throat> but it's calculus, basic science. Um, Position, velocity, and acceleration are related through these derivatives. And, and so we always kind of, when we were introduced to this topic, of course, we, we had position, and if you wanted velocity, you would take the derivative, and if you wanted acceleration, you would take the derivative. Uh, the truth is, the way things really work is you kind of work backwards. Uh, you Sometimes, a lot of times, what you know maybe is the acceleration, and you're trying to get back to what's the velocity formula. So you would integrate. And then you might want to know the position formula. So you would integrate again. A lot like this, in a way. Given a second derivative, can you get to the function? So watch. Given, if I just told you, hey man, I'm on some planet, man, where the gravity is negative 32 feet per second per second. By the way, what planet am I on? Okay. I'm on some planet, man. It's really green and cool. All right. It's got a blue sky. Anyway, I'm on this planet. There's the acceleration due to gravity. Not sure how I calculated that, but anyway, that's true. Can you tell me the velocity of any object falling in this gravity on this planet? I think if you wanted velocity, I think what you would do is be integrate this acceleration. Isn't that true? To get from acceleration to velocity, you should integrate. I mean, you see this chart, right? Going down the chart, you differentiate. Going up the chart, you, you integrate. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, so to get velocity, watch what I'm saying. I'm saying to get velocity, I have to integrate this guy with respect to t. Okay, so watch. How do you integrate a number with respect to t? Here we go. Just How do you integrate a number with respect to t? Integrate the number t. Good. Yeah, earlier today I integrated an 8. With respect to x, we integrated an 8. What do we get? 8x. Right, thanks. So integrating a negative 32 with respect to t, it's negative 32t plus c. And then, you know, if I talk like a math teacher or a physics teacher, then I talk in general here. I don't have numbers. Listen to this a second. Then what I would say is, you know, at, when time was zero, you know what my velocity was? My velocity was V naught. <clears throat> at T equals zero, my velocity was this. With, without numbers, if you don't mind, this, this could be a number. I could tell you what this velocity was, or, or I can call it V naught. V subscript zero, the initial velocity. So at time equals zero, this is my velocity. You know, that's a piece of information that will help you find C. It's like this, right? Wasn't this a piece of information that, that helped me find C? That's a, when x is this, y is the, the derivative is this. When, when, 
when, when T is zero, V is V naught. Watch what happens. When you insert that piece of information in here, uh, <clears throat> the V becomes V naught, the T is a zero, so what does C turn into? V naught. C is your V naught. Right, thank you. C is your V naught. <clears throat> so your velocity equation is, your velocity equation is negative 32t plus v naught. All right, this is pretty cool. Hey, how am I going to get to position? I'm, now I got velocity. I'm right here, you guys. I got that equation right there. I got the velocity equation for any object on Earth on this planet. How do I get to position? I want the position equation. I should integrate. I should integrate. Okay, watch. I'm going to call it position. I'm going to call it S for position. And then I'm going to integrate this. I haven't integrated it yet. Look at me. Have I integrated it yet? No, I'm just saying, I'm just telling you I'm going to integrate this. <laughs> and the answer is going to be my position function. Now let's integrate it. Uh, with respect to T, how do you integrate negative 32T? Uh, T squared, T squared divided by two, negative 16 T squared. That's awful familiar, ain't it? Uh, this is a number, you gotta keep in mind, V naught's a number. When you integrate with respect to T, what is it? V naught T plus some constant, we're done, plus some constant, and this is my S equation, man, this is awesome. This is my, this is my position equation. Do I have any information about position? Like, and, and maybe I do, <clears throat> what I should probably have said or will say now is that when t equals zero, I do know my position. I'm just gonna put in an ar arbitrary number called s naught. At t equals zero, my initial position s is s naught, my initial height. You know, it could be 85 feet, could be 117 feet. It could just be a number called S naught. Anyway, if I plug that in, this will help me find C. And guess what C will be? It's going to be S naught. Right, it's going to be S naught. You can watch it happen. <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm saying that the S, the S is S naught. I'm plugging in a zero for that. I'm plugging in a zero for that. And so guess what C is? S naught. So we just derived this, uh, I mean, maybe you don't, I don't know how well you enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. Um, but it's kind of abstract derivation proof in a way. We just proved this formula that we used to just give you. When you throw an object up in the air, this is how it acts. Shut up and believe us. Well, now you don't have to shut up and believe us. You, you can derive this and, and, and <clears throat> you can derive it for any planet, for any A. <clears throat> you know, we, I did it for specifically, I did it for this specific A because I was specifically on Earth, okay? Listen, what if, what if I did this for some unknown A? This, is, this bothers students sometimes, but watch this. If this wasn't specific, if this was just an A, let's see. How would it show up here? What would it, what would it be? What would this be? It would be a, an A, right? A T plus C. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So this would be an A. A T plus V naught. Oh, this so this would be an A. But now A is just a number. It's some uh, some unknown acceleration. But it's like I'm on some unknown planet where I don't know the acceleration. And then <clears throat> hang on. But I would still get this. Now hang on, what about right here? When I integrate A T with respect to T, what would I get? I get t squared divided by two. See, remember I took the 32 and divided by two. That's how I got 16. But if it's an A, what would I have? A over two. And so on Earth, this is your position equation. But on any planet, this is your position equation. Are you okay? Are you okay? I mean, it ended up being a 16. It was half of gravity. But that's why it's half of gravity. It's half, no, no, no matter what planet I'm on, this is the game. This is, would be the game. <clears throat> it's 
In fact, maybe I should call this A G for gravity. <clears throat> So, anyway, listen, um, back to Earth. If I go back to Earth, what do I do? I erase this and put negative 16 T squared. Now I'm back on Earth. That was scary for a second. Um, I didn't know where it was. Um, now I'm back on Earth. <clears throat> so, we, we got a bunch of word problems involving this again. And it's kind of funny, though. I mean, now we've derived it using, we derived it starting with an unknown A, how did we, 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 we integrated twice to get this position function. But now our word problems we run into don't necessarily make me do that. Our word problems we run into are, are kind of, they, they kind of resemble chapter three word problems that we used to do. So, so you should try some of those. We, maybe we should try some. Um, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to hit pause on this thing.